Alright, hello and welcome back. So, Punishing Grey Raven is one of those games that lets you be really creative with the in-game gear and overall in-game weapons. And you can come up with a lot of really unique and really effective builds uh, for all of the structures. Today I'll be focusing on the physical structures and on their team composition and overall team lineup and of course uh, team effectiveness. And well, uh, you probably have already seen uh, what I play most of the time. It is pretty much my basic uh, lineup that pretty much is working really well and so far proven to be really effective. So uh, all of these characters uh, have also their unique lineups and you can really be creative with them and pretty much come up with really interesting setups that will work eventually. Well, uh, since I'm focusing on physicals, uh, a physical team is not complete without the top tier physical damage dealer, Alpha. And this character is one of those characters that is really powerful and works with a variety of uh, structures. And uh, I did talk about using two DPS in the team. Uh, this is Lee Matrix and I will be using him within the same team as Alpha as a secondary DPS combined with one support and that will be S Live. Now for the supports you can choose the B Live as well, uh, works also really well. But I use S Live mostly because she has superior healing abilities and overall is a really good character for for sword. Well, we are going to start with the war zone and we will see how uh, the teams will work. Now, each of the game modes uh, can be uh, each of the game modes can be played pretty much with this team. Of course, some lineups will be uh, better than others for a certain uh, for certain game modes. For example, uh, boss battles will, are going to be really beneficial uh, for an enemy because she can reduce the defense of the of the enemies with her QTE. And for Warzone, you can replace Ashley with Karenina. Her QTE can pile up the enemies and can collect them at one spot, and then you can pretty much use Alpha's Sword Wave or Ultimate to clear them very quickly and efficiently. So, we have a variety of teams that we can use. And in my case, uh, I, I do use uh, Karenina, I will use her uh, in the second uh, second attempt here, and she does work really well. A really interesting uh, character, and that one up also depends on uh, you staying alive, uh, which means don't get hit. While with this lineup, you can pretty much swap in uh, the wounded character and just heal him in the background, and then pop them right back in, in the field when the time comes. So, like I said, both lineups uh, are good and both are efficient for uh, for variety of purposes that we have in the game. But for Warzone, uh, I would recommend that you use uh, Karenina in your my main line lineup because she can clump up the enemies at one spot with her QTE. It is a black hole QTE and can suck all enemies at one spot and then it will make it pretty easy to uh, deal all of them at once uh, with a single ultimate or with sword blades, which you will see me doing later on here in this video. And this lineup is also really good. Uh, I like this lineup a lot because I can switch the DPS's left and right. When one is out of evasion, I just switch the other back in while the, the first one is recovering. And when the first one recovers, I just switch the first one in the field and, well, uh, the cycle repeats. Well, uh, this is in the second map, and some maps are definitely going to be beneficial uh, to have Karenina, because some maps are big, like this one. It is a big arena, and the enemies can move around freely, uh, left and right, and that might be that might make uh, the DPS a bit inefficient, and that's why it is important to clump them up on one spot. Well, so far the lineups are doing pretty good, despite fighting a uh, warzone that is not for uh, for them. This is the fire warzone and the previous one was dark. Unfortunately, I don't know where the physical warzone got lost, <laughs> but I didn't see it for a very long time. Maybe a week or so, I don't know. Well, let's pop the ultimate. And overall, a really smooth interchange between the two characters. 
And I like how this sword uh, does stay on the field even after you switch the characters, which is really nice. Really, really nice touch to the game. And also really important, uh, you can also change the characters once one character is um, wounded. I think I mentioned that, but it is also really important to heal that character. And you can heal that character by triggering uh, her kuti and by triggering uh, the healer's kuti at the same time. That way you will heal uh, the support character or the secondary DPS character real easy. Okay, sorry for the weird cut. Where was I? I kind of got interrupted there. I, I don't know. I don't know what was what I was talking about. Well, uh, let's see. Well, uh, we we are finishing the this, this stage, and after that, I will switch the teams, and we will see how Karina will work. And it depends. Uh, at the moment, I don't have the correct six-star weapon for this character. That also benefits the, the DPS a lot. But I think so far she is doing a good damage to the enemies, which is really nice. Along with Lee, in the in their combination, they work pretty pretty good, since both of them are physical. Well, here we have Karenina, and as you can see, once you trigger her Kuti and once you clump them all together, it is really easy to deal with them with the sword waves or with the um, or with the ultimate, and it works pretty much the same way with uh, with Lee. Uh, it is just the difference that we can do a burst attack, a small burst attack, but Alpha can't. She is mostly a single target fighter. And so far, um, I'm doing good. And, well, I'm, I'm doing good by taking in taking out these enemies, that is. And for this lineup, you can also switch uh, Karen, but it is not necessary. Like, you can use her only for the QTE. And in this lineup, you will rely on skill mostly to keep you alive, and of course the healing of uh, healing of S as slave, which is important. Belief can also do the same job, but uh, I found out that as slave is doing a lot better job at healing. Well, Belief is good at uh, mostly good at DPS, but also good at healing, which is also really nice. Well. Uh, there we go. Her ultimate got all of all three of them at the same time. If it were the if the Kuti was active, I would do the same, just a lot easier. And uh, this is where also mistakes uh, are going to be really expensive in terms of you will not be able to make a lot of mistakes. If you do, well, you will have to either switch the characters or retry. In my case, I mostly I would retry because well, it is kind of faster, and you can also uh, wait and heal the character. As you can see, I am on. I didn't. I did two mistakes and I lost all my health. And this is where the dual, dual DPS would be really good, and I died. <laughs> well, as you can see, in this case, the dual DPS would have kept the DPS going, and well, I wouldn't die, but I would have two DPSs on the field. Doing, doing a good job at uh, taking out the enemies. Okay, well, uh, let's jump on in the fire stage. Let's see what will happen over here. So I, I'm also using uh, Karina, and that was a fast clear. I did clump them all together at one at one spot, which is good. And you can uh, definitely, you should definitely focus on the A and B ranks in the game. They are really powerful and they are really useful in terms of overall uh, DPS and support. Karina is one of the most important supports for Warzone because of the ability to hunt them all together at, uh, at one spot. And you can use Alpha, you can use pretty much any other uh, DPS. You will see next time uh, I will go with Bianca with the Lightning team, which is really, uh, really powerful, and you will see her being a really useful, effective, and powerful character in that lineup as well. And she also can be used to clear mobs without any problem. You can do that, but I just prefer to uh, use one character for that while the other are supports. But of course, it depends from player to player, uh, that's just how I play, and uh, like I said, everyone is pretty much free, and the developers have given us the opportunity to be really creative with the builds in the game. 
and this is this is something that I uh, personally like a lot about uh, about the game. The ability to pretty much make any lineup, any team work with just being creative, which is really 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 impressive. And they also uh, buff characters that are weak. They listen to the players, which is really nice. And they actually they actually fix problems with the game, which I value a lot. Well, uh, this was a this was a smooth run, I think. I could have played a little bit better, but uh, so far it was really smooth. And well, I'm pretty much happy with the with the performance that we did get from uh, from this team. If it was the lighting, if it was the physical map, that would be a nice 250,000 score, which is pretty, pretty decent because of the physical buff that we get. Well, now for the boss battles and for the pain cage. Pretty much for the pain cage, things are really interesting. Mostly because this lineup that I currently have uh, is definitely going to work. And here Karenina also will work, but uh, she kind of doesn't have a purpose as a Kuti uh, user only there in that case. And for boss battles, uh, Nanami is really shining. So pretty much Nanami, Sliv and Alpha are going to be doing a really good job at taking out the taking out the bosses without any problem. And they're also going to have a uh, really good job and they will be really good at dealing with uh, other interesting bosses like the Nightmare Ball, for example, which I'll be playing a bit, uh, a bit later. And so far, uh, this team also works, although I am switching the DPSs in and out. I'm pretty much using all the characters because the evasion would be... because the evasion would be emptied by one character. And... Change the... We, I have to change the character. I have to change the character in order to prevent taking damage, which is also really important. And well, this was the, this was Rosetta, one of the more interesting bosses in the game. This is Dark Kamui, also one of the common bosses that we see in in the in the pain cage. And he is also kind of difficult. He can be really tricky. They did buff him. I I say that pretty much all the time because. Uh, I, I just want people to know that he got buffed, okay, he got buffed, he is more dangerous than he was before, really interesting what they did there with him. And Alpha here also doing a good job, but you have to be uh, in close quarter combat with him. And Nanami and of course uh, Alpha and Sleeve will be doing a good job here. Even Sleeve can do a good job. And pretty much any other physical DPS can go with the Nanami and Sleeve or Believe setup. And they would work really good and you will pretty much get similar results. It mostly depends on how uh, how you play. And of course, the better you play, the better the score. That's how this game goes. Despite the team, of course. It matters that you... Uh, it matters that you get... It matters that you get a really good team that will work. Uh, or a team that really suits you. That's what I am aiming for pretty much uh, most of the time. Okay, well, um, let's see, this is the Nightmare Ball. And that Sword Wave definitely did a lot of damage to him. Well, this is one of those unpredictable bosses where the lineup's um, consistency and the lineup's ruggedness will be tested. And so far it does do a good job. I'm doing a good job at staying alive. You can, however, uh, die really easily here, so you have to be careful. In the um, focus, when the boss focuses the lasers on you, you can die really easily. And uh, that was I, was... I was really lucky that not to take any damage there. Uh, sometimes that hit can take all of your helper. And in that case, you will have to switch characters. Okay. Now, I use Aslif. So you should always try to use this character when you are... When you're fighting uh, this boss, and when he is uh, when he is up there, and when he spawns the lasers, you should have a healer on the field, and then you can spawn the Kuti and heal the healer and heal the team without any without any problem. Oh, there we go. See, that was sneaky from that was sneaky from him. And I have the sword waves. Now, one one important thing for the sword waves for Alpha, you should match 
one uh, one evasion, one blue evasion, uh, evasion plus one blue, three blue, and one evasion plus red or three red. That way you will get maximum possible damage out of out of alpha with the sword waves. Well then, that was nice. We did take out the boss really efficiently, and let's let's move on to the next part. Well, their, consist their consistency at taking out uh, mobs in other uh, challenge stages that we have also in the story, in the hard mode and pretty much the other stages in the story that we have, they are pretty consistent, uh, overall they work really good, they perform really well, and overall I'm really satisfied with how they work in general. The ability to switch two DPS in and out with one support is really good, and in my case, it works really well, although I mostly use the S-Live Alpha and Karenina setup, or S-Live Alpha and Nanami. Those are pretty much my, my most common lineups. Of course, for Nanami I have to uh, get a couple more memories to maximize her effectiveness, but she does still do a good job at uh, doing DPS. And, of, and also, of course, uh, in the lighting team, the lighting team is at the moment, I think, one of the most powerful teams that we have that you can have in the game, and it will be really interesting to see how the lighting team will work. Although we already know uh, why the lighting team is the most the most powerful uh, the most powerful team at the moment in the game, mostly because of uh, mostly because of uh, Bianca, because she is a S class structure and as an S class, she is really strong. Well, uh, let's keep on playing these stages a bit more. So far, uh, like I said, really happy with the team's performance. Now I have other physicals, will be really interesting to see how they will work. Uh, Kamui for example and uh, Nanami for example, they will they can be DPS's. Kamui can be a good DPS. Uh, pretty much any structure in the game can be a really decent DPS. The most important thing to note, uh, however, is that you have to build them uh, the way that pretty much suits you the best, the most. Because, uh, in my case, I tried other people's setups and somehow they just didn't work for me a lot. So, it is really important to know the most effective setups that other people use. But it is even more important to come up with your own setups that will work for you the best. In, case, in my case, for example, all of these builds that I have are builds that... Uh, that work for me best, I set them up to be suitable for me the best and I am just sharing my experience using them. And so far, I am really satisfied in their performance. Well then, uh, let's see what we can roll here more. Yeah, these are the level 80... Yeah, these are, these are the level 80 uh, challenge stages and they can be really difficult and, well, Let's test the team performance out on these stages. Keep in mind, here you can die pretty much with one hit or two hits. Uh, and you, <coughs> you really have to be careful when you're playing them. And so far, uh, let's see, sword wave action, there we go. And the whole, the whole build uh, of S, of S Lee, is also focused on his own performance. Uh, keep, keep in mind, all of these structures use uh, different memories, pretty much made to suit them the most. Uh, of course, the physical memories can be shared across the physical characters without a problem. That's not a big, that's not a big issue. Uh, however, you cannot use most, well, you can actually use most of the physical memories on lightings, on, for example, on elementals. But you will have to... Uh, definitely take advantage of that elemental setup on elementals. And that's the main difference between building the physicals and elementals. For example, uh, as Bianca definitely has to be equipped with lighting memories to maximize her performance and overall to maximize uh, her effectiveness, while the physicals can work with most of the with most of the most of the physical memories, which makes the physicals a lot more uh, build friendly than lightings, or should I say, the opposite can be also the case because sometimes we have a lot of we have lots of these uh, physical memories, and 
picking the right one does take uh, some trial and error and it does take uh, some experimenting to pretty much see what suits the player best. Well, uh, you can also build Alpha to be a ultimate spammer without any problems, that also works really good. And so far, uh, I am pretty satisfied with my own personal builds, although uh, I did try other builds and they also look really nice. For example, the Alpha ultimate spammer is really good and so far really, really effective. And I do enjoy playing the character a lot. Well then, uh, I think it is time to wrap things up here. Uh, it was my pleasure to play this one, of course. Uh, I hope this was, inf this was informative. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to post down below in the comments. I will sure I will be sure to read all of them. And well, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed. And well, I will see you in the next one when we are going to be taking a look at the. We're going to be taking a look at the lighting team next time. Well. As always, I love you and take care.